Welcome back to the Wicked Anvil. Years of war have forged this fortress into an unshakable bastion. The once small outpost has grown into a key stronghold in the battle against the goblins of the maligning monster. The war efforts are going well, with each raid and battle bringing the dwarves closer to what seems like a victory in this century-long war. Now, the Wicked Anvil stands as a lifeline for the mountain homes. They need the Wicked Anvil to act as a spearhead in the war against the goblins. Together, we'll ensure that it remains strong and unyielding in the face of any threat. Join the Land Ash Dwarves as we dive into the latest chapter of this epic saga. The Hydra, Atog, Okuk marked one of the most terrifying moments in the Wicked Anvil's history. As the beast ascended upon the fortress, its seven serpent-like heads moved with terrifying speed and coordination, striking fear into the hearts of the dwarves. The chaos began when the Hydra slipped into an unnoticed vulnerability. A staircase left exposed by the reconstruction of the fishery on the surface, after last winter's goblin siege, the dwarves had been so focused on repairing their war-torn fortress that they had overlooked this small, yet fatal, gap in their defenses. As a tog Okuk rushed down the staircase, the first dwarf to cross his path was struck down in a heartbeat. His life claimed by the Hydra's relentless jaws. The dwarf was split between the heads of the Hydra. In a quick motion, the dwarf was thrown about the fortress in pieces. In the midst of all this chaos, Nil, a seasoned warrior of the fortress and a member of the Thunderspears, stepped forward. Knowing that retreat was not an option, he charged headlong into the battle. With a mighty swing of his spear, Nil severed one of the Hydra's heads, but the beast was far from finished. In a brutal and drawn-out struggle, Nil managed to decapitate a second head. Despite the Hydra's relentless assault, Nil's resolve did not falter. With one final and precise strike, he pierced the skull of the fifth head, and the creature let out a spine-chilling roar. Its remaining heads flailed in agony before the beast collapsed, lifeless, onto the stone floor of the fortress. The dwarves gathered round the fallen Hydra, awestruck by Nil's bravery. The dwarves chanted Hydra Slayer, cheering on Nil's accomplishment. The death of Otago Kook brought relief, but it was a sobering reminder that even in the times of rebuilding, the wicked anvil could never let its guard down. This victory, though costly in the life of one dwarf, further solidified the dwarves' resolve and proved that no matter what horrors they faced, from goblin sieges to legendary beasts, they would stand strong. The dwarves had decided that Nil earned the title of Hydra Slayer. Just 11 days later, Dastot, the competent weaponsmith, had a mood and he claimed a forge. He ended up creating a beautiful iron spear. The experience turned him from a competent weaponsmith to a legendary weaponsmith, and he was granted full control over one of our magma forges down below. With the recent bravery of Nil, one of our spear dwarfs, he was granted a larger room and some better quality items. He was also gifted a masterfully crafted gold statue of the Hydra. The dwarf metalsmiths had referenced the carcass of the beast to capture all of its finest details. The statue is placed in the middle of his new room. Two goblins thought that they could enter our fortress and steal one of our dwarven children. They rushed down of our staircase where they were quickly met by Sodom, one of the thunder spears, a spear dwarf. When they entered the hallway, Sodom's cold iron entered them, ending the goblins without a fight. With battles becoming more and more prevalent, we decided to upgrade our hospital giving our healing lord a better place to work. Our construction dwarves also decided to build a new library called the Inky Home. Rith and Reneg will be our scholar and our scribe for the fortress. Our metalsmiths crafted copper furniture for the library. They said the color went well against the black stone. The fortress smelters had been hard at work down below. Our first few bars of steel were poured. The ingots brought to Dastot, the dwarf who had recently made that iron spear and is now a legendary weaponsmith. Dastot managed to create not only one, but two exceptional steel axes and one masterfully crafted axe. The masterfully crafted axe was gifted to no other than the anvil commander, Ezum. Ezum will use this weapon to wage war against the goblins of the maligning monster. Early autumn of the year 126, the mountain home of Kick Ross sent their trade caravan. We traded them bins full of own jewelry. 
which we received in return a lot of food. Some food that we didn't have so we could collect some seeds and some more fruit. That way we could have a variety of alcohol for the dwarves of the Wicked Anvil. We sent them home with a profit of over 7,000 in value. A miller dwarf named Aerith was brawling within our tavern. Under the influence, this dwarf had toppled a silver statue that led into the tavern. There were witnesses, but the fortress guard decided that there was no punishment for this crime, seeing as Aerith had only done this one time. Anvil Commander Ezum, with his new steel battle axe that he is named Ralzo Kun, were sent off with the Hammer Banes to raid Spider Bowels. Spider Bowels has been the victim of a lot of our raids. The dwarves of the Wicked Anvil have been trying to weaken this settlement, hopefully to destroy it soon. Ezum and the Hammer Banes stole an iron anvil. The dwarves, knowing that you need an anvil to make an anvil, hope to cripple the goblin metalsmiths and weaponsmiths for a time. Not long after the Hammer Banes had left for the raid on Spidery Bells, a weaponsmith named Ingish had a mood. She worked tirelessly down below in one of our forges and ended up creating an enormous copper corkscrew, which we used to create value in one of our guild halls. Once again, the miller named Aerith brawled in our tavern under the influence. Again, no one was hurt. This time she didn't topple a statue, but she wandered around aimlessly in the tavern, throwing threats at her nearby dwarves, and still the fortress guard found no punishment for Aerith. The Thunder Spears, led by Anul, our new commander, who now carried an exceptional steel axe crafted by Dastot. The group was sent off to Sinful Tunnel, a nearby goblin settlement just west of Spidery Bells, where the Hammer Banes had just returned from. Sinful Tunnel held a population of about a hundred, our scouts say. The Thunder Spears returned with some iron armor and another iron anvil. Clearly, our military has made an emphasis on stopping the goblins' production of metal goods. Our Baroness Udil has a love for anvils, so while we constructed her new room, office, and dining hall, which will hopefully keep her much happier in the days to come, one of our smiths crafted a masterful iron anvil. Knowing that Udil loved anvils, it was obvious to put one in display in her room. It is also a reminder of the purpose of the Wicked Anvil for her, and hopefully she continues to lead the Wicked Anvil and its Dwarves of the Land Ash to victory against the goblins of the Maligning Monster. Another weaponsmith had a mood. Salab took over a forge. Now what was the most exciting for the fellow dwarves of the Wicked Anvil was that he had steel, meaning whatever he was fixing to craft was going to be made of steel. Salab ended up creating Thakdakis, a steel sword, which we added to the Baroness office, raising the value and also reminding her of the purpose of the Wicked Anvil, to be on the offensive against the goblins. Now looking around the fortress, we noticed that there was a single dwarf who had a terrible mood. I sent the dwarves to check on him, and we actually found out that he had lost his ability to stand. Adil, a dwarf of the Thunder Spear Squad, had suffered severe nerve damage in a fight against the trolls last winter when they had attacked the fortress. The trolls had broken in and the Thunder Spears lost six of their ten members in the fight. Adil was one of the survivors, but clearly he did not get away unscathed. We let Adil retire and gave him no other jobs within the fortress so he could go about socializing and improving his mood. It was a well-earned retirement. The dwarves of the Wicked Anvil were missing something. They were missing guard animals. There were no giant bears, cave dragons, or war elephants to guard our front gates. There were a handful of dogs, but we needed something bigger, something meaner, something more terrifying. So Ezum, the Anvil Commander, and the Hammerbanes set off to Terror Balanced, another nearby goblin settlement, to hopefully retrieve some guard animals. And just after they returned, the dwarves of the Wicked Anvil realized that the Hammerbane squad had been followed. They were followed by a goblin horde, which descended upon the Wicked Anvil with an army more fearsome than any of the dwarves had faced in recent memory. This time, the goblins had brought heavy reinforcements. Over 15 towering trolls. Their massive forms crashed through the landscape as they charged towards the fortress. Hearing their deafening footsteps on the surface above struck fear into the dwarves that still remembered the last time the trolls had attacked. 
But the wicked anvil's trap-filled hallway, a deadly corridor of copper and stone, awaited the goblins. As the trolls surged forward, traps sprang into action, cutting down most of the hulking beasts before they could even reach the inner defenses of our militia squads. The goblins followed, crawling over the trolls' large, lifeless corpses. They were cut down all the same, serrated blades ripping through their crudely crafted armor. But the battle was far from over. The surviving goblins pressed the attack, their battle cries echoing through the long stone hallways. At that moment, the Thunder Spear squad and the Hammerbane squad made their move. Charging out into the trap hallway, the dwarves met the goblin forces head on in a furious melee. Among the fighters was Bimble, a seasoned warrior who fought with the ferocity of an entire squad of dwarves. Yet in the heat of battle, Bimble was grievously injured and fell to the ground unnoticed by her allies. With the first wave cleared from the nearby hall, the two squads made the decision to retreat back to the safety of the hallway and regroup. They realized their numbers were off. There was a dwarf missing. With the goblin cries growing once more, they rushed back into the fray finding Bimble in the nick of time and forming a protective line around her. Blow after blow, they held their ground against the advancing goblins, not allowing them to reach the fallen dwarf. After a brutal and exhausting fight, the tide turned in the dwarf's favor. The trap hallway continued to take its toll on the goblin forces and their numbers dwindled. Panic set in. The remaining goblins fled, retreating from the fortress in defeat. The siege was broken and the goblins' morale was destroyed. The two squads ran back to the main floors to get the healing lord for Bimble. As the goblins fled from the wicked anvil in disarray, the retreating ranks were suddenly interrupted by a new terror. Lyses, a towering minotaur. The beast emerged from the wilderness, its eyes wild with rage, and without hesitation, it tore through the goblin ranks, slaughtering several of the retreating foes in a violent frenzy. But Lysi wasn't satisfied with goblin prey. The scent of blood leaked from the fortress, the battle-worn dwarves, and their injured comrade Bimble, which drew the beast's attention. With a deafening roar, the minotaur charged into the trap-filled hallway, ignoring the fallen trolls and the goblins, driven only by desire for dwarven blood. Bimble, still lying injured in the hallway, awaited the healing lord's aid. But with the minotaur now charging towards her, the dwarves had no time to waste. The Thunder Spear and Hammerbane squad, weary from battle, once again sprang into action. They rushed back into the hallway, determined to protect their fallen kin. The Minotaur was an imposing force, but the dwarves had no options. With a decisive blow, a hammer dwarf swung with all of his might, smashing Lysi square in the chest with an iron hammer. The beast bled out rapidly before dying, and with the immediate threat neutralized, Bimble was finally taken into safety. The dwarves had saved her. The wicked anvil had once again triumphed in the face of overwhelming odds. But the siege and the sudden arrival of the Minotaur served as another grim reminder that in this harsh world, danger was always lurking and ready to strike when least expected. Hydras, Minotaurs, and Goblin sieges. All of these vile and cruel forces bash against the walls of the wicked anvil. And the fortress still stands. The war effort against the maligning monster is still ongoing. This fortress has quickly become one of my favorite playthroughs that I've done, and I really hope that you guys are enjoying this series just as much as I am. I am trying some new things with a little bit of uh, animation. I don't know if you guys have noticed in the last few episodes, but I'm trying to make the quality a little bit better as I self-teach myself basically how to do this. So I hope that quality is coming through like I think it is. Um, I do really appreciate you guys checking out the video. And, and I just wanted to say thank you to the almost 1,800 of you right now that have subscribed to the channel and all of the support that you guys have given me over the Hall of Shores series and now the Wicked Anvil. Now, if you want to leave a like and a comment or just subscribe to the channel, anything really helps me out a ton. It helps get my channel and my content out to new people who may enjoy it. Also, if you want more cost or game stuff, down below there is a link tree where you can find a spread shop where there's some t-shirts, hoodies, a whole bunch of stuff that you can find that's pretty neat, and also a couple other of my socials. Also, I want to say that we're closing in on the year 129, which marks the 10 year anniversary of this fortress. So once I hit that, which will probably, you'll probably see another episode and then another 10 year episode that I'll be posting. So keep your eyes peeled for that one. Also up here, you're going to be seeing a couple videos and playlists and such to click on. Uh, feel free to do that if you'd like, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Peace.